Lo-Fi Tano. Letter from a fan. Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. And I'm going to be answering a question, a query, responding to a statement made in this email that was sent to me and I printed out on my printer. Hey, Anthony. I was recently talking to some friends about the idea of no junk, no soul. That some artists need to be on drugs to be creating their best music. I'm curious whether you think this is a real connection or bullshit. I don't know exactly where I fall. To me, Alice in Chains was much better in the 90s with Lane Staley than they are now. But I also love a lot of straight-edge punk. Ideologically, I don't care. But, I, but musically, all the band members are entirely drug-free and still make some of the best kick-ass punk. I'm also curious as to how you think weed plays into this. I'm a big fan of stoner metal bands like the Melvins, Bomb Ripper, Weed Eater, etc. Just curious as to your thoughts and whether you think this is a bad idea for future musicians to have. Kyle L. <coughs> Good question, Kyle. Good talk. I have written down a series of points right here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I will be making them in this video all bullet pointed so I don't forget anything. Point number one or a preface I do not do drugs. Mm hmm. Nope. Nope. I am not a recreational drug user. I do understand that we, we, we've all like done drugs since drugs are kind of like, you know, so deeply laced into our society. Like, you know, we've all taken aspirin or, you know, we've probably all had caffeine. Many of us have probably had caffeine. There are probably a few of you out there who've never had uh, maybe even a little bit of green tea. Not that green tea is known to ruin lives, but <laughs> still. I, I'm, I'm talking mostly in this video about alcohol or marijuana or harder stimulants, such as Adderall, or stuff like heroin, things that are, for the most part, illegal, in, in America anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you, drug war. Anyway, no, I do not use drugs. I have no plans in the near future to use drugs. And that's, that's just my choice. So I'm just letting you know that that's the, the ideology, that is the point of view you're going to be getting in this video. All right? Just, just to let you know ahead of time. So, in my opinion, point number two, or the first point, drugs do not make art. People make art. I think the person making the music is way more important and way more essential to the music you are listening to than the drug itself. Even if the song you're listening to is titled Drugs, 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 I love drugs. The person who is singing on the song, the person who is playing on the song, as a person, is more essential to the music than whatever drug that person is using or doing. You cannot replace a person on a record with a drug. To talk about your Lane Staley point, Lane Staley, obviously a drug user, but, and you're, and you're saying, you know, right now they're not as good Alice in Chains as they used to be. If you took someone to replace Lane Staley in that band and made that person use just as many drugs as Lane Staley did, would the music become good again? Would he be just as good a musician as Lane Staley? Would we see the second coming of Alice in Chains making their great records again? If you took John Ledden... Uh, John Lennon, and replaced him in the Beatles with somebody who used just as many drugs as John Lennon throughout John Lennon's career, would you have just as talented a guitarist and songwriter and vocalist as John Lennon was? Mm -mm. You wouldn't. You would not. And anybody who sort of comes, you know, at me in this video or just at any of you saying, well, well well, drugs, if you don't like drugs, you might as well throw out all the music you, you ever listened to in the 60s and the 70s, because that was all drugs. I feel like that kind of person is, is unintentionally insulting the artists that that person may be a fan of, truly and honestly. Because the reason that these people may have been drawn to drugs in the first place is because they're out-of-box thinkers to begin with. 
you know? And part of the reason out-of-the-box thinkers continue to use drugs as an inspiration point and become drawn to drugs are because drugs continue, unfortunately, to be taboo in, in many modern societies. If drugs were more of a norm or weren't something that people got in trouble for doing, would it be as big a deal <coughs> for artists in, in their music? There are certainly more songs about drugs than there are about driving a car down the highway. Uh, not to say that there aren't good songs about <laughs> driving a car down the highway. There are. But all I'm saying is that on the surface, it would certainly seem much less exciting since we've all driven cars down the highway. That's all I'm saying. All right. So my next point is that not only can you just not replace a musician with a drug on a record or with somebody who was also using drugs and get the same results as a talented musician who might happen to be a drug user on a record, but <sighs> drugs do not make you a good musician. If you suck at guitar, if you suck at singing, if you suck at rapping, if you're a terrible drummer who can't keep time, using drugs will not make you a better musician. <laughs> Maybe you'll sound better to yourself, but you, you, you probably will not sound better to other people because the thing is, is that you have not gained a certain level of technical skill or writing skill that can only be attained with a certain level of sobriety that would allow you to focus and retain information and retain experiences that, that allow you to learn what it is to do something well and what it is to do something terribly. Even people who, like let's say John Cage, for example, or Jackson Pollock, who sort of work outside the confines of what it means to be playing an instrument well, do at least have some semblance of, of technical skill or what technical skill means or how to apply technical skill if they decide to do so. So even in the avant-garde world, you need to have a, a certain level of, of understanding of the so-called rules that you are breaking and working outside of. To merely have no understanding of those rules, then do some drugs, then sloppily go on a guitar doesn't make you a genius. That's all I'm saying. So, no. No, if you, if you do drugs, it does not necessarily mean you're a good musician. And there are tons of artists on the drug slash total straight edge sobriety scale who make terrible music. Avoiding drugs does not make you a good musician, does not make you special and neither does doing drugs. That's just the fact of the matter. That's just the fact of the matter. It, it doesn't make you good. It doesn't. It doesn't. It can certainly inspire an experience. It can certainly inspire a certain action in you, but it doesn't necessarily equate to entertainment for other people who are partaking in the art that you're making. My next point is that drugs are an experience. Drugs are an experience that you embark upon, that you choose to embark upon. Some people choose not to embark upon it. And drugs as an experience, as a potential catalyst for creativity and inspiration, can just as easily cause you to write an amazing song just like I don't know, the death of someone close to you can inspire you to write an amazing song, or the loss of a relationship you really cared about. There are certainly more love songs than there are drug songs. Then we have, I don't know, having a kid, getting old, having a near-death experience. Maybe there's a food stuff you really love out there that you feel like you couldn't live without. There's also music. Music also inspires music it turns out. There are a lot of things out there that we do. Travel to another country or meet somebody new that, for whatever reason, depending on who you are, could potentially cause you to have a certain idea that wouldn't have popped into your head otherwise. And these ideas and these experiences, this stimuli, 
can drive you to make great art if you are, in fact, an artist. And drugs just happen to be one of these experiences. Now, you know, you could stack experiences on top of one another. You could be having sex with someone that you love in a different country a week after your best friend died on heroin, okay? I mean, <laughs> you, it's, it's not like you can only do one experience at a time, but drugs are just one of these experiences, okay? And it, at least from what I have observed in the world of music, whether it be musicians who use drugs, musicians who don't use drugs, and musicians who write songs about drugs, and musicians who don't write songs about drugs, there is enough music out there about things that are not drugs, or not written or created on drugs, to entertain the idea that, hmm, maybe if you don't have junk, you can have soul. There are people like... Frank Zappa, who I know was a chain smoker and I know might have drank or I know uh, might have either smoked a joint with his band occasionally or been around his band plenty of times as they were smoking, but he was a guy who wanted his creativity attributed to the fact that he was a creative person. He didn't want, you know, even though for his time, his music was really trippy. It was psychedelic. It was out there. It was just... Some of the stuff he was doing was unheard of and really strange in the music world. And he didn't want his creativity being boiled down to something that he didn't endorse or that he didn't think was a pivotal part of his creative process. Then there are other musicians out there who maybe aren't staunchly against drug use, but it doesn't really play into their everyday lives. There's people like Robert Fripp, from what I understand, uh may not have used drugs, which I read an interview with him uh, saying that with John McLaughlin. There's also, let me see, Kendrick Lamar, who, off of his last full-length LP, and in interviews as well, talks about not smoking, not partaking. He feels like kind of an odd man out, being the only person in the studio who isn't smoking, but there's a part on his last record where kind of the character he's playing has a traumatic experience smoking a joint that seems to be laced with something else and its experiences like this that kind of go on to inform his choice not to partake in drugs in the future. There's also Henry Rollins, Ian McKay of Fugazi and Minor Threat, Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull, Steve Albini. There are a lot of great musicians out there who do not partake, and for them, being sober uh, is... is an experience that can be inspirational to them just as much as drug use can be inspirational to another person. There's also Bruce Springsteen, who I understand uh, allegedly lives a really clean, squeaky clean life. I mean, <laughs> eats real good, goes to the gym, and doesn't really partake in drugs. Let's see. And beyond that... I mean, as far as drugs as an inspiration point, I mean, that they can be, but I think in the music industry, and maybe this is why we sort of lead ourselves to believe, oh, well, drugs are so essential to the artistic process, I think we tend to obsess over or spotlight or glorify when, for so many artists, drugs kind of go really wrong and either ruin their lives and sort of just derail their entire career, sort of like a guy like DMX, for example, or Gil Scott Heron, rest in peace, or um, end these people entirely uh, via an overdose like Jay Retard or uh, the numerous other musicians who have uh, died over the decades of some kind of drug abuse. You know, and, and, and that's another thing. Drugs, like any other experience, you can kind of overdo it, whether it be personally or physically, or even in your art as well. I mean, who wants to hear you stretch out the same experience for album after album after album after album and song after song after song? Only writing songs under the influence of drugs or only writing songs about drugs is about as boring and, and, and one-dimensional as only writing songs about this relationship that you, you uh, <laughs> got, you know, uh, kicked out of or somebody broke it off with you so many years ago. You know, there, there are other things to be inspired by. There are other things to, 
I guess, uh, right about. And as somebody who doesn't use drugs, I don't really feel any pressure to use drugs or partake in drugs in order to enjoy songs that are about drugs. Like I said before, in my opinion, drugs are just an experience, and I personally don't feel like I need to experience everything somebody who is writing a song has gone through in order to enjoy it. There are tons of other songs that are about things that I will never go through, and yet I don't have a problem relating and understanding and finding compassion for whatever struggle an artist might be going through. Like Nas, for example. A lot of Nas's lyrics and his songs on his classic album, Illmatic, has to do with the environment that he grew up in in New York and sort of the, 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 the suffering he and many other people went through just with the area that he grew up in, the, the dangers of it, um, the trials and tribulations of it. However, people across the world have not really had a problem enjoying or getting into his music. It's the fact that he has had a unique experience and he is putting it up on display for everyone to partake in is what makes his music wonderful, not that everybody has gone through the same thing as him, okay? And I think my last point I might have made earlier <laughs> that because artists are outside of the box thinkers, they may sort of be drawn to drugs or drugs may play a large part in the artistic world just because they continue to be so taboo. Not that musicians wouldn't seek them out uh, if drugs were readily available for everyone, but maybe they're such a big deal because they tend to be such a no-no. And in the artistic world, especially in the music world, we seem to have a lot of artists whose personalities and public personas are based upon breaking the rules and doing things you're not supposed to do, like Miley Cyrus recently with all of uh, her endorsement of marijuana use in every which way she can publicly allow you to know that she smokes marijuana, whether it be over social media, or the clothing that she wears, or the lyrics that she's writing, and I, I think we can all agree that it has not necessarily improved her uh, musical acumen. Hmm? 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 So, I hope I have expressed myself adequately on this topic. If you have any questions or expressions you would like to put out there in relation to drug use and art creation and music, please throw them down there in the comments, and I will uh, be talking with you guys a little bit down there, and, um, you know, listen, whether you use drugs or don't use drugs, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Neither are wrong. You can take non-drug use so far that you're jumping down other people's throats and looking down at everyone and make yourself look like a dick. And you can take drugs so far that you can be pretentious with that as well, or, you know, you can actually overdose. There are fine lines between use and abuse. And all I'm saying is if you do choose to have drugs as an inspiration point, just make sure you don't step over that line. Hmm? Hmm? Though that would be a point of inspiration as well, though not one I would recommend that you hop into voluntarily. Cool? Cool. Alright. I think, I think that's all I can say on this. Let me, let, me, let me scan my brain for five more seconds. Allow me five more seconds to scan my brain. Nope. No, I think we're good here. You're the best. I love you. And thank you for watching this really long-ass video. Forever.